Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to B and K Bees. Sorry, it's been a little while since I last made a video, but we had about a week of straight cold. So after I grafted into that one, it became cold and stayed cold for a week. Um, so over the last couple of days, I've been running around like a crazy man trying to get nukes put up for that graft. Uh, for when those cells are ready, they have to have a place to go. So now that I am largely caught up, I'm not done, I still have 25 nukes to put up before I can place that graft, um, but now that I've made some progress and I'm largely caught up, I feel like it's time to make a video. So I have one pallet to go today, this pallet right here, and I am going to try to make as many nukes up uh, from these bees as I can. It's a little late in the day, uh, so it's not going to be a fantastic time to be getting into these bees, but it has to get done, so let's do it. All right, looks like a good busy batch of bees. So, if I can find that queen, to be honest, regardless of whether I find that queen, if they are queen right, I'm splitting them up. If I'm uh, making a cell builder, then I absolutely have to find the queen and I have to make sure she doesn't go into the box. But in this case, if I put her into the box, these bees will make another queen and the mating nuke will already have a queen, so nothing really too tragic will happen. Um, but of course, it's always nice to find her and know that you're not wasting any cells. All right, a food frame, heavy, heavy. Not likely to have a queen on it, but I check anyway because I've found queens in weirder places than two. Another food frame, heavy, a lot of bee bread, a lot of nectar. Now we're into some brood. Searching for the queen. A lot of young bees, that's awesome. Some bees that are emerging as we speak, which is pretty cool to see. I don't see the queen. Beautiful brood frame. Queen cell on the bottom. Good thing I'm splitting them today. Another good looking brood frame. Looking for the queen and I do not see her. No queen on that frame. Another beautiful brood frame. More queen cell activity on the bottoms of the frames. Once again, good thing I'm splitting them today. I'm splitting everything over the next couple of days. These bees are swarm ready. You can see the swarm cells hanging off the bottom of that frame. They would have been split before now, but like I said, it has been cold. They thought might dissuade some colonies from swarm prep, but some of these larger ones could not be dissuaded. Another busy brood frame. I'll clean on that side. No queen on that side. Similar story. Busy brood frame with queen cells. Lots of eggs and young larvae in the center on that side. Found the queen. Bottom 
she's walking toward my finger right now. You probably can't see her because the shadows, but trust me, she's there. So I am going to set this right here. Start making some moves. Alright, on a busy colony like this, I'm basically going to take the entire top box and then I'll get into the bottom a little bit just to make sure they have food. But for the most part, this whole top box is going into nukes. Beautiful. That frames a split in and of itself if it was slightly warmer. I'll rip these cells out when I get them back. For now, they can stay. If I miss one, I'm not that worried about it. A nice plump swarm cell in a mating nuke doesn't sound like such a bad idea to me. There's a busy one on that side. one is light, I am going to give them one of those food frames, depending on how much food they have down here, I might take a little bit. <clears throat> no, I don't think I'm going to take any from down here. I'm generally trying to leave them with about six or seven brood frames each. get a queen excluder and a honey bath. Alright, that's the gist. <clears throat> Here's what I got from that hive. I have another food frame that I can give to that three framer. All right, and then now they'll all get, or they will each get empty frames. I'll show you that too. I'll be right back. Thank <laughs> you. 
when I make nukes up, I find it advantageous, unless you plan on working them every few days, uh, I find it advantageous to give them an empty frame that'll allow for them to place nectar away from where you want the brood to be and allow for there to be a lot longer leash before you've got to get in and mess around with them and make sure that they're not going to swarm because putting three frames of cap brood in a nuke gets them swarm ready real quick. Now obviously neither of these have a queen, um, but they'll get a queen cell this Sunday, so uh, a couple days from now. Um, so they will have a laying queen here within the next couple weeks. Uh, and then at that point, you know, the, the population will be probably pretty similar to what it is now. Uh, maybe a little bit higher. And uh, yeah, so then I'll wait for those queens to get mated and cage them up and sell them and make a little cheese. I doubt I'll be doing anything in there, but I won't know for certain until I look. Some big old wasp on the top. Got it. I was very wrong. I don't usually like being wrong, but I'll take it now because that's a beautiful box to be used. fur comb up. I know you guys have commented on that in the past. I try to. I don't always do it. But now with the uh, incredible amount of bear activity at my bee yards, I've taken extra precaution that not drawing them in. bit of food, largely empty, more food, eggs in the center, I am looking for the queen, don't see her. Curious bees on my hands and flying at my face. Especially when the rest of this yard is filled with such gentle bees. Looking batches of brood. Lots of angry bees. Alright, I found her. She's right at the line of my shadow, my veil shadow. Set her down and work fairly quickly because it's pretty chilly. Take two or three frames. <laughs> Public free. Nah, probably two. I want to be able to call this a honey yard. If I start taking three, there's no likelihood of getting any early honey. <laughs> 